patron, take them away. And a warm welcome to one and all. And if this is your first time here, I am the overgrown child, the scruffy trader. And what I'm trying to do is put trading in the real world. Maybe show you a trick or two along the way. So that sounds good, and you do love to trade, hit that little subscribe button. Genuinely helps, and we'll crack on. So what are we doing today? Well, today, we're going to sit back and watch me in an interview that I've recently taken part in. Uh, I was reached out to by a, a company called Signature FX, up-and-coming channel and TV show. And they wanted to discover about the five percenters because... They'd seen me on the website and they'd seen various other interviews and got very excited. And here we go. So do check the guys out. Um, Signature FX is who you're looking for. And here's the interview. Gary, so welcome to the show. We're just really happy to have you here. Uh, reached out to you on uh, Facebook and Telegram. And just really happy with the response. You know, you've been really positive. And I've been following yourself, been following your uh, your forex adventures with the five percenters, and mm -hmm. you've been you know, an inspiration to me. You know, I've seen you pa pass your challenges. I've actually seen you uh, been leveling up. So, I suppose my question to me is really, what's your favourite asset to trade, and why? Oh, right. Um, I kind of have two that I gravitate to all the time, which is I love the DAX. Now, my personal wage is normally the DAX and I'm really pleased that the five percenters have introduced that into some of their instant funding which happens to be the, one of the challenges that I'm on um, so the DAX is my go-to but the other one is Cape Pound US uh, it moves every day uh, obviously I'm UK based so it's around the pound anyway so if I'm ever watching news events or anything it's always in my mind it's always free-flowing but the main thing is I understand it. It kind of behaves itself, although at the moment it's been a bit naughty because it's in sort of 33 year lows. But if you're a day trader, it doesn't matter because every day is an opportunity and the chart will tell you what it needs to know. And because I've been around cable so long, you can see the motion within it. And the DAX is pretty much the same. And then if I move away from them, I have sort of secondary products that I look at. I like the FTSE, uh, Euro dollar I'll keep an eye on. And I, I occasionally trade oil and I, I do like gold as well. So I have like a core basket of what I look at every day. Yeah, so, um, you, so, you, so you're, in, you're definitely on the right chart. So uh, I, I've been trading gold a lot lately. And uh, when I just passed the last 5% it was actually a gold dollar that got me through. Yeah. But speaking to Mandela, he loves gold. He he, he loves uh, oil. You know, some Mavi, uh, Mandela's property is a, like a savvy investor out of us all. But uh, so quickly going back to the five percent, us we're talking about a prop firm. And yes. prop, for those who are watching the show, a prop firm is really it's it's funding. Uh, you're actually trading somebody else's capital for them where if, if you're a good trader, successful, you, you know, you can make a profit and actually have a profit share with that company. So is, is there any like, any other projects you've been working on recently you know, with regards to Forex or are you purely focused on the 5%? Well, no, it's, it's in two halves, actually. I, I trade my own funds. I have a sizable account for myself. Uh, and that's actually broken up as well because I do maybe 20% of my time is swing trading. The rest of it is day trading. Now, between my wage and the prop, it's quite easy because whatever I'm doing on my wage, I copy it over into the prop. So the two of them run in tandem. Mm -hmm. And then beside that, we I like, well, how, how, how to put this? I, I don't put all my eggs in one basket. So I'll trade a car fund and I'll trade a house fund and a pension fund a swing trading so i trade three funds separately so that they are not affecting each other now they're swing and it takes a few minutes at the end of every day because i know the criteria i'm looking for and then the other side of it is i just concentrate on my wage 
but I'm savvy enough to know that as soon as I've hit my markers, I stop. And when I stop, it means I'm not going back to mark and I genuinely do stop. And that's what keeps consistency high. When you're talking about projects, projects is a job. And if you don't follow the task properly, you don't complete the job. So I'm constantly working on myself as a project, if that makes sort of sense. So I, I'm constantly planning my day like a business. And I'll start at the same time, I finish, finish at the same time. And that's the project. You did mention um, you did mention paying yourself a salary. So yes. how do you uh, just I'm out of curiosity? How do you pay yourself a salary? I know you'll receive um, some funds from the five percenters from Prop, mm -hmm. and then you said you have a few buckets um, of your own personal funds. What's sort of a good way to approach uh, taking well, a salary? It, it, well, well, Prop for me is bonus um, because it is secondary to what I'm doing to my wage. And to cut long story short, I never wanted to do prop. I did it to help some guys that are in a sort of little group that I run and they wanted to try it. And I can't speak unless I'm speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. So I said I would do it with them. So I went along those lines. So that's my bonus, right? So if you're at a job and, you, and you're sort of on piecework and they give you a bonus for doing a good job, that's what prop is. Now, my daily wage, I work it out like this. I, I work in benchmarks. So my benchmark is £200 a day. Right? Now, my yearly salary to pay my sort of just household bills, I've got no debt. You know, I don't have a mortgage or anything like that. So I don't have to push myself too hard. Mm -hmm. £30,000 a year, puts clothes on my back, feeds the household, pays the utility bills, that sort of thing. And if I want to work three days a week, because I don't like to trade Monday, I don't like to trade Friday. Uh, I do, but if I do, it's going to be very sporadic. So my working days is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. 200 a day, 600 a week, across a year is about 30 grand. So that's by breaking everything down into a monetary figure, helps me take a wage. So anything I do over 200 pound, is bonus now some days i have phenomenal days i have really good days and i might do 600 quid in a day so i'll take tomorrow off because i don't want to give it back but then when i go back on the third day and do another 200 pound i've had another good bonus and that's how i build a wage up because i i still think of this as if i'm running my factory it's re really good advice and you just made me think now straight away because yeah, you're right enough with prop firms is uh, i know the five percent and, and you know they're very reputable and they're a very good company but who knows what tomorrow holds so it'd be quite foolish if you, you know to put all your eggs in one basket and maybe rely on one prop firm as your income for for the remainder so to treat it as a bonus gary yeah that's, that's a really really good way to look at it and uh, i'm sure mandela will talk about this off air but yeah i, I, think, I, I, think, I, I, I think that's excellent advice but I'll add something into that though, yeah. um, because when, one of the things that I've discovered with dealing with prop, uh, as I said, initially, I never wanted to do it because I always used to think, well, why would I pay somebody to trade when I could put that money in my own account and trade it up? Now, I built my account that way. I compounded it up, but it took me three years to build it up before it became a point that could be safe, like a big enough basket of, of money that can keep you in the game, but also pay you at the same time. Now with prop, you could speed up that process because your return on investment, take, take for example, the, the current rate on 5% is for the middle fund. If you're watching the journey that I'm doing on YouTube, I was asked to do it again. So. I like putting pressure on myself, guys. Um, <laughs> I, I started at the first of this month and I'm 22% up. All right, so I'm right into it at the moment. And I'm taking that through the journey. I'm doing it just for the guys. But that cost me 385 euro to buy into it. And they give me a 10,000 fund with a 600 drawdown. So in my mind, I don't look at the 10,000. I look at the drawdown. So that, that bought me a £600 account, all right? 
So straight away, or six hundred dollars, shall we say? Mm -hmm. I will trade that. Pass it. They will quadruple the fund, which will naturally increase that drawdown. And I think it will go to. I think it's two and a half thousand is the drawdown on the next level up off the top of my head. But even thereabouts. So that three hundred and eighty-five as an investment will buy me two and a half grand in a very quick period of time. And then I can use that two and a half grand to upscale again a lot quicker because they'll double the account if I do 10% thereafter. So if I go back to my starting of building a pot, I if I started it that way, I'd probably half the time and then just draw the profit out and put it in my own funds. And then I haven't got somebody looking over my shoulder, shall we say, it's it's my own money. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how I use prop. So one one concern, so when I talk prop firms and when I talk to Mandela and you know, some other of our, our trading colleagues, they always say to us, do prop firms pay out? So yes. here it is, Gary, do they pay out? Yes, yeah. um, I've put it, I'm one of the few that shows my statements, but I also show what they, they use, um, what's called a deal payment system. It's a, it's a little bit like PayPal. Um, and every month they pay me on time and I, and because we had these questions saying do they pay and I said right all right I, I don't want to do this because why would I show my bank account because people have asked that as well and I'm like what planet are you living on <laughs> um, but I'll, I don't mind showing you the deal account because it doesn't show any financial information apart from money going in and money coming out and they pay me that's brilliant very quick, where, where are you from? From the north, north? I am from the north. I come from Durham in the north of the UK. All right, okay. And I've lived and worked in nearly every city in the UK over my yeah. life. And I can honestly say there's no place like home. Yeah, I've got, got a friend from you, but his accent's much stronger. He's from Sunderland. Sunderland? Yeah, don't don't you put me in the same boat as one yeah, of them boys. Don't swear we, on we, it, we, we, we are like borderline tribalism up in the north. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you watch Game of Thrones, that was yeah. based on round here. <laughs> we have uh, viewers of varying experience levels. So for someone who's just starting out, maybe maybe they just open an account and they have two thousand pounds or five thousand pounds. What sort of advice would you give to that person who wants to be a successful trader like you, Gary? Well, the first thing is don't look to make Rome in a day. It's going to take time. Now, one of the best things you can do is teach yourself to slow down properly. If you win and you win again, you think all of a sudden that you are invincible. You're the king of this hill, but you're not. The market is the king. And if you try and take it on, you might get a lucky punch. But when it hits you, you're going to know about it. Yeah, it hits hard. <laughs> we know. <laughs> yeah. We've all had know this. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. I lost 18 right. grand in three days. Right? Wow. It was the biggest yeah. loss I've ever had. And it wow. taught me the best lesson in the world. You can sort of be a bit of a stealth, a bit of a ninja getting in and out. But if you try and take it head on, you will lose. Yeah, and the so, only way I could combat that was less is more. So I trade less, but I gain more. Yeah, so that's no. that's the best thing that I would do. But the other side of it is earn the right to trade. And, and what I mean by that is a lot of them, if you've got 2000 in your account, you can effectively open up a three or four pound position on certain products. It's too big for you. Start with the smallest position you can and earn the right to increase it and that's that's what i would do and then when you do that you'll start becoming calmer in the markets yeah. the markets are very easy the technicals are very easy the hard part is you agreed yeah i agree with that yeah so, so for myself uh I, I always say yes i think every video we do so my losses and there's been some expensive losses that's by admission into being, I think, relatively successful. But, you know, my, my advice is, I, I always say to Mandela, I've bought every course, I've bought every EA, I've bought every robot, I've listened to every fake trader on Instagram who's got a flash car, and guess what? 
none of it worked. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, you know, sometimes you have to learn the lessons the hard way. What are some of the things you look at when you are starting to, to, to prepare for your day trades? Um, and, and what are some of the, the indicators or some of the, the techniques that find, you find most helpful? Oh, okay. Well, well, I day trade exactly the same on all assets. Right? Uh, I don't believe in system hopping because if I took the marker off the chart, and I also took the time frame off the chart. You probably couldn't tell me what chart that was. So to me, it's the peaks and the troughs. It's the key turning points. But there's key turning points that are strong and there's key turning points that are just chitter chatter noise. So when I see these core sellers, as you're on about before, going, right, you're on a five minute chart, you see this zone and that, I like to, that means nothing in the market, not a bean, right? So I start out on the high time frames. I'm looking at dailies, that sort of thing. And that is where your information is coming from. And then I'll filter it down into an hourly chart. I pay very close attention to levels, but the levels are all high time frame. For me, once you go below four hours, they hold no weight whatsoever. And even a four hour is, when it comes to levels, can be relatively weak, you know. But it's yeah. also how you map it out. Now, I love Fibonacci. Uh, you, you, two two. Need, you two need to talk. Now you're talking <laughs> my language. I love a daily Fibonacci. Yeah, oh yeah. Right? Fibonacci for me, if, if I couldn't have anything else, would be what I use. Because it can roadmap a chart. Not only can it roadmap it, it can give you an entry. It can give you take profit points and it can also give you an exit point when you're wrong. And this is if you know how to mark it up, because if you think about fibs, they've been around forever. And no, and all that a fib is, is a ratio of a number. And if you think about what a chart is, it is ratio of numbers. So it naturally repeats. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know, yeah, then you can look at say a MACD. The MACD is pretty good for giving you a basic idea of direction. <laughs> yeah. All right. But you adjust it slightly. I adjust it into Fibonacci numbers to line up with the levels that I'm putting in. That's a good point. And then just basic things like an RSI can give you an, a rough idea of the state of play on the here and now. And then when you put them all together and you're looking at the peaks and troughs, and think about it this way. If you know the market chart and you've got a solid level here, and you've got a solid level here and the price is in the middle well you're already at 50 percent because it's going to hit one of them your next task is just to figure out what the general dominant direction is and that's where your fibs and your macd come in you make a single choice on that and you stick with it uh, and you cool. either accept that you're right or you're wrong and the other part of it is if you are going in a single direction, I do mean stick with it because too many times I say, right, I've caught this drop. Now I'm going to catch the retracement. Yeah, but if you're going against the dominant trend, you don't know how far that retracement's going to go. So what if it's only a short fake up? So you stay with a single direction for the day. And again, that cuts your losses out. Because if you're wrong, you just quit. I have a rule. If I lose, I stop for the day. It's that simple. You know, I'm wrong. I lost. I read the market wrong. That means I'm not in tune with it. Step away. Yeah, it's good advice. It's really good advice. That is. They're very disciplined too. Very disciplined. Yeah, well, that, that's what trading is. Yeah. If anybody goes into this thinking that it's easy and that it's just X marks the spot, please, for the love of God, stop. Yeah. Because yeah. you're going to lose money. But if you look at it as a job and a career, because it is a professional career, you know, that's why it pays us quite well. Um, you have certain things that you have to do and it takes time to learn your craft. You know, you don't become a plumber or a doctor in a day. I was going to say, what are your secrets to trade? And you've just given us too much. And, you know, <laughs> and we are going to invite people to reach out to you. But what I do want to talk about and what really, really piqued my interest in yourself, Gary, was 
uh, first of all, I was on the 5% of the website and they've said, you're probably the most consistent trader they've met. So that's number one. And number two, uh, I read somewhere that you went on to, you won some like, first of all, 80% of your trades. You went on a w winning streak of something like 82 trades in a row. You, did, you didn't have a loser for 82 trades. That's, yeah. wow. wow. But it's, it's that's unbelievable. So do you kind of normal for me. So talk us through it, you know, come on, pick yourself up, let's, let's hear about it. <laughs> well, it, it's, not, it, it, it's not, right, I'll, I'll put this in context. Um, I haven't had a losing year in seven years, and I haven't had a losing month in three years. All right? Incredible. And it's all down to one thing. Less is more. I learned very quickly, the longer I'm in the markets, the more it's going to take it off me. I learned that really thick and fast. And I learned it through a hard lesson as well. Um, and you could call it the greatest gift from your worst nightmare um, because I lost a colossal amount of money. But up until that point, what that made me realize was I was gambling and I just hit a lucky swing. So now what I do is I know the markets that I look at will give me one, two opportunities at best per day. So effectively, that's all I'm looking for, two trades. And I'm patient enough that I can come to my desk at six in the morning, look through the markets I want, zoom in on the best one. But then I mightn't get a trade till two o'clock in the afternoon because I'm waiting for these conditions to align. And then once I've completed that, I stop. Some discipline. <laughs> yeah. And it literally is. And I, I right, I'm paid, bang, stop. And because I do it that way, each day is kind of positive expectancy, you know? And the other thing is I have a big checklist of what I'm looking for. And it and if it doesn't line up, I grade the trades and they go A, B, C, D, F. And I only trade A and B. So, so when I, so when I got introduced to trading, so Long story short, obviously Man Mandela introduced me to the Forex markets and I begged him to teach me how to trade. And I, I did, I bought him how many pints of Stella, I used to get drunk, <laughs> <laughs> drunk on tequila, none of it. it, 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 it. I'd let you come and sit with me. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, well, one day, one day he finally cracked and uh, so he showed show me this Forex market and uh, my God, he pulled out this list. Does this point align? Does this point the line? And I was like, well, I thought this was easy. If it was easy money. No, no, no. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hear what yeah. you're saying. And uh, wait, wait it is. And, and the, the other side of the checklist is um, it's not off one time frame either. I, yeah. I have certain things I look for and I go down through the time frames. And basically, all I'm doing is a funnel. Literally, starting up here. And then you're funneling it in till it gets to the bottom. And, and basically the way I look at it is if you cut out all of the bad, whatever's left has to be good. You said when you have a losing trade, you stop for the day. And I, right. I wanted to ask you, is that as soon as you have that losing trade or is it a certain amount of losing trades or how, no, how do you it, determine when to right. stop? No, no, it's now the way I trade to some people is odd. But to me, it makes perfect sense because I never fully commit to the market on point of entry. I, I, I stage backwards into a trade to go forward, okay? Because very, very rarely you'll time the top of the market, okay? So I know where my initial entry point is, but I also know where the exit point is. In other words, the, the, the amount of pain I'm willing to put into the market. If I ever hit that pain threshold, that is me done for the day because it has gone through my tears and and they are tears of sadness at this point because <laughs> once I go past 50%, um, right, I'll, I'll kind of put this in context. I like to break an initial position by five, mm -hmm. right? So if I, if I was going in at five, my account can take five pound a pip. I will enter the first position at a pound. Now, the second one will be another pound and then another pound to three. Those three quid 
Well, that three pound is my trade. That's what's going to full target because very rarely you can time the exact hit. And if anybody says they can, you're a better trader than I am. All right. And I've yet to meet one. Not better than me because there is better than me. But what I mean is somebody who times it to the pip every time. Okay. It's going to come against you. So why not get a better price? This is no different than my factory days. I would buy a little bit of product, but if I'm buying a lot more, I want a better price for it. Mm -hmm. And so forth and so forth. So that principle is here. So that gets me my bigger win. It also reduces exposure because I work out the risk on the full amount. So if it's a hundred pip there and I was at a pound a pip, well, that's a hundred pounds. I don't want to pay a hundred pounds. So I'll break it up and I'll enter a 20 pence and another and I'll build it up, reduces the exposure. Mm -hmm. All right. But not only does it reduce the exposure because it's got further to go to the target, it increases the upside as well. All right. But if I go to the fourth and the fifth tier, they are there to get me out of trouble mm -hmm. because at some point the market will retrace and I might have dipped down too deep for me to get out of like a target. Yeah. But it can come back up and get me out at either a small loss, break even, or if I hit lucky and I'm trailing the stop behind it, a big win. So that's how I manage it. But if all of those tiers have been hit and the last one costs next to nothing because it's right down next to where the stop would be mm -hmm. and it goes into that, that means I'm wrong. And I've, I, I'm, I'm just not in tune with what I was looking at. And if I'm not in tune with this one, I'm probably not in tune with the next one either. Mm -hmm. So my best bet is to step away. Yeah, it makes sense. And then I'll look at it tomorrow with fresh eyes. Yeah. And that's how I, that's how I do it. Mm. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Great. So I just want to ask you, so we've talked about many positives of Forex trading and, you know, but let's, let's talk about something. So what's the worst part of trading Forex? The emotional roller coaster in the beginning is definitely the worst part um, because you can be full of euphoria and you think you're doing amazing, but then suddenly you get a slap in the teeth because you've done well. And as you say, you're getting your yacht and your Lamborghinis or whatever, and you're all and you're getting the brochures out and you think, and this is a, and then it's snatched away from you. Yes. It's it it almost takes you back to your childhood when you you're getting wrong and you, and your toys are taken away from you, you know you feel devastated and 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 it's one of those industries that can humble you down to that level. Have you ever Whereas felt like if you... Gary? Sorry, just to, sorry to interject. There. Have you ever felt like giving up when you've been slapped in the teeth? Have you ever thought oh. this ain't for me? I'm walking away. Um, yes, to be honest, um, but. It was different in in when I started, um, I used to trade for my business, but it was based on daily charts and one thing or another. And I had the light bulb moment of, well, if I'm doing this on a daily and the way it worked for us is we, we might buy with the bank for a couple of months, just waiting for whatever I was doing this personally. And I built up a fund quite well and I lost it in four days, literally. 18 grand in four days. Well, wow. and I, I, I was actually snake bite fearful of this, the keyboard. I couldn't touch it for about a month. Um, mm. it, it just, and it hit me at a time when the company wasn't doing as good as it should have been. And it was just a combination of elements. But then another part of me, when I settled down, thought, well, I must have been doing something right in the first place to have built that in up. Because I built it up from under a thousand mm -hmm. and I went back, but I, I did. That's kind of where the challenges and everything that I was talking about 30 days came from. I had to sort of step away from being the gambler yeah. to being the businessman. And I've been in business for a long time. I should have known better. And I just slowly built it up. And yeah, you get slapped in the teeth. Um, my wife's when the company closed that was a that was a real torrid time i used this as a way out alongside going back into industry to work as normal and 
I just put the hours in, but the other side of what makes you sort of want to so she's having a go at me all the time. Oh, this is useless. This is not doing it. And, and, and you have these arguments, but you're trying to keep focused mm. and you lose your focus. And then you think, oh, do I really need the hassle? Right. And you've got to get through that pain barrier. But once you're through it and you understand where you're going, then it becomes easier. Yeah. That's but, but the emotional side of it is horrendous. And the thing is, the higher you go, the, they think it's easy. It's not. No, it's not. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the bigger, I mean, I, I can trade up to 25, 30 pound a pip quite easily on my account. Okay. All right. But when you're dealing with those figures, yeah, yeah, you can make 200 quid in a heartbeat. And I do, because I look at return on investment rather than the sort of fabled RR. That winds me up because that sets you up for a fall. You know, you've got to have common sense with it because you need to be paid. Mm -hmm. right? But if I can get into the market and get out quick and I've paid for the day, I'm happy. And then I can do it again tomorrow. Um, but those numbers can rack up very quick against you if you're wrong, especially if you're not disciplined. Yeah. You know, because yeah. how many times have you heard people go, oh, well, I'm not wrong. And they just let it run. Or oh, it's 500 quid against me. Oh no, it'll be all right. Oh no, it's a thousand against me. Oh no, no, I, I, I'll come back. Oh my God, it's, it's two and a half grand. Yeah, guilty. Where is it? 500, yeah. you knew you yeah. were wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, you know, I've had every indication. But just an example for me. So this week uh, it was gold. And I had clear indication which way gold was going to go. It didn't go that way. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Gold's yeah. been funny this week. It tanked twice when it shouldn't have done. Yeah, so there yeah. we are. I, I was long yeah. on both occasions. So, but yeah, yeah. Mandela and I were speaking, and yeah. actually, you know, we were in contact, you know, regular throughout the day. So I messaged Mandela, oh, gold, H2, H4, D1, all showing bullish. Let's go, let's go. Uh, uh, oh, well, there we are. So, <laughs> the better, but, <laughs> so yeah, that, 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 so yeah but I understand that. And I think one of the hardest things for me when I first started trading was admitting that you're wrong and getting out of a trade before yeah. it becomes too damaging and I, I still find it hard now mind you know I, I, I'll put my hand up to it and uh we all so, do yeah. we all do I mean that it's it's kind of why I stage because when I started it was always 100% to market and then you put it in and immediately it goes against you I was like wow Jesus yeah what, what's going on here you know, I needed a way to relieve that, but I needed a way to reduce the exposure. And that's why I start split because there is a, another version of that called Martindale system for some of the viewers who don't know that. That is incredibly dangerous. But if you do pound averaging, like what I was talking about, or dollar averaging, depending on where you are, um, it's actually quite a sensible way to trade. And it's yeah. how your pension funds are built. Yeah. They are built that way. But there has to be a point of no return if you're wrong. Yeah. And that's where fibs come into it because you can measure it out. And if you go, right, the extension's 127 to 161, well, there's your zone of pain. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I do. I'll stage down. And if it goes through that, I'm wrong. That's it. And if yeah. I'm getting a slap for a thousand quid, you know, well, I'm getting a slap for a thousand quid, but it's a damn sight better than sort of going, this will come back. And then suddenly I'm seeing 3,000. Yeah, no, so I'd rather have a slap around the face than a kick in the nuts. <laughs> Any day. <laughs> you know, because the worst thing in the world is watching your kids fail. I've got four, the wild, right? And and, and they are, they're, they're, they're crackers. Um, but I've got a work ethic in me and I'm trying to push it into them. You know, I mean, my youngest 26 now, because I'm quite old. Um, and he's he, he, he took took a little bit of a well let, let's just say he, he's becoming a good trader no, but it so took a lot of time to get him in that mindset but I can't really slap him about because he's bigger than me now and I'm six <laughs> foot and 20 stone so that gives you an idea of him right? <laughs> and also he, he, he's military you know so he's got access to automatic weapons so if I say the wrong thing it could end badly <laughs> 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 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to do a bit more of that. Yeah. No, it's, it's brilliant. That you, uh, it's brilliant to teach your family to trade, and you know, yeah. Mandela. Uh, I'm quite convinced. You know, uh, he's, it's he's, not the easiest because yeah. he's the only one of. I've got four kids. All right. Uh, and I always make the joke of, have you ever seen the evolution of man where it goes from chimp to man? Well, my kids is that in reverse, right? And it goes from like, oh, Chris down to the youngest one. Uh, and they all laugh about it because Logan's like that. You know, he's like, oh, mm -hmm, I can do this. But to get him interested in it was very difficult. Where, whereas like my eldest boy, you know, he's he saw the work ethic and he sees what you get from it. And, and he's doing really well, you know. So he's not really interested in trading. And the other two are the same. They're not interested in trading because they're doing quite well in their own lives. Whereas Logan wanted to follow it. And I had to... I've been through the journey with him because he's a young kid. Yeah. You know, and sometimes he believes the gloss. Uh, so it was interesting. And right. Joanne, my wife, she had a go at it. And she can't deal with the emotional side of it at all. Well, yeah. <laughs> so I, it it takes a lot. T t talking of wives, Mandela, would you like to tell Gary about uh, the yeah, results? Yeah, I can talk Gary? a bit about Gary. So, um, Gary, we started uh, like a, it's like a simulated demo account. Um, mm -hmm. We gave it to 103 people this year. And my wife, um, love it to bits, she beat me. Um, she came. She came in the top ten. She's never. She's never uh, read an investing book before in her life, and she just wiped the floor with me. She has not let me off the hook. So oh, that's why I'm laughing because if Joanne beat me, I would never hear the end of it. Yes, no. it would be on every post-it note on my desk. She would have t-shirts made up. You know, an idea. Yeah. Uh, so Gary, it's, it's been brilliant to have you on the show, and do you know what? I'd love to get you back and maybe anytime. And anytime. one day we we could have a little chat about Fibonacci in a bit more detail, especially you and Mandela, and maybe yeah. you yeah. can uh, convert me and educate me into using fibs but gary i think you know a lot, a lot of our viewers are going to really enjoy will, will enjoy the show so how can they reach out to you you know what can you uh let us know your contact details and of course we, we're going to post your details uh in the comments uh, oh, I'm, below. I'm, I'm, I'm very easy found uh, the easiest way to find me is just go onto youtube look for the scruffy trader uh which is me because i'm not exactly polished am i you know um and all my contact details are there that's great. So, Gary, is there anything you know you'd like to add? Anything else you'd like to speak about, or <laughs> not, not to put you on the spot? <laughs> no, I think we've been on a yeah. on a good little journey here. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it. It's some parting advice. I'm going to go back to that up there. That is one one of my mottos. But the one motto that I live by, and it is something I preach to my kids. And I say it at the end of every single video I do. It's do what you love and the money will follow. And the reason behind that is very simple. If you put money before you do what you love, you will always fail because you'll despise it. Whereas if you love something and it doesn't matter what you are, you will get better at it. So if you want to be a bin man, a dustman, be the best dustman and if you're the best dustman you'll get a promotion you become best bin man supervisor and because you've got the supervisor role you get a pay rise then become the best supervisor you'll become a manager and you'll get a pay rise so as a part and gift do what you love and the money will follow oh, excellent that's really good yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, i like that i like that i think for the three of us in trading investing is a passion and when i talk to people who are interested in getting in um one thing i say one of the first things i say is i have a passion for it um yeah. a question i get i'm sure you get it as well gary and maybe even you andrew how how much time do you spend trading um <laughs> and it's it's hard to like make make divisions in your day because it's almost like it's always in the background you know, you can, you can... I, I'd say 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's definitely, if, if it's a passion of yours, go for it. And I think the way you worded it was, was perfect. But to add to that, what I will say is the clicking of the mouse 
is the last part of the puzzle. Your homework and preparation is most of what you do. And, the, and a lot of people think it's the other way around. They get in, click, then they start working out to see what's going on. You should actually know your entry exit before you've even pressed that button. And that is why I do 100 trades in a row without losing.